Do you remember where I bought this yarn? In, in Malabrigo, California. In San Francisco. Artie didn't even come into the yarn store. He was outside the whole. All right, we are back with our second take. Welcome to the Darcy Does It podcast. I'm Darcy. I'm Artie. And we are sweating. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, little hot. Uh, pretty warm in New York. Um, that's where we are right now. We are from, well, I'm from St. Louis. We live in St. Louis, but we are in New York right now for a wedding. And I didn't want to miss a chance to have another podcast. It's been a while and I have released some new yarns I want to show you and I have some progress on my projects. Uh, I'm Darcy. This is the third episode of the Darcy Does It podcast. And if you are new, welcome, come on in, consider subscribing if you like what you see. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back again um, for another episode of this. So it is hot in Brooklyn, which is where we are right now. Um, it's not quite AC o'clock yet. Um, so we are just, you know, enduring, enduring the, the, the heat. And the humidity. The humidity is also quite high. How high would you say the humidity is? I can almost, you know, I'm now that the fan is off, uh, I'm really a lot more aware of the humidity. Um, so it's probably 90 degrees. No, it's less. It's, it's the, less than 90? Yeah. Well, with my hair, it feels it's like it's like 90 already. degrees. It's supposed to rain? Yeah, it's so going um, to cut some of the humidity. Hopefully it rains and the humidity goes down a little bit. But we are here to show you some beautiful yarns and some of my projects that I've worked on since the last time we had a podcast. So we're in New York for a wedding. Artie's officiating his friend's wedding. Mm -hmm. And he has not written his speech yet. Yeah, but you know, I have it up in here. You just gotta put it down on paper. That's right, okay. We're in business. Okay, wait, let me make sure I get this anything. So in the first take, I told you that we have gotten to a thousand subscribers. Thank you to everyone who subscribed. Thank you. We are going to have a giveaway. So Terry from At Haynes House Yarns has generously donated two skeins of yarn for a giveaway. And to enter the giveaway, you need to be a subscriber and you need to comment on this video what colorways you would want if you won the giveaway. So you need to go to at HaynesHouseYarns.com, check out what Terry's dying over there, and then come back here, comment what skeins you would like, and then you could win. So we are going to do the drawing on June 15th, and if you comment before then, you have a chance to win. So um, as a thank you, thank you, Terry, for donating that. And thank you to all of my subscribers for subscribing and watching our podcast. So that's the giveaway. Now on to what we are wearing. You want to go first? Oh, yeah. Well, see, this is um, a high end cat T-shirt mm. that Darcy found for me. Have I worn this before? Um, I don't know. I don't know if you did. I don't know. I have like 10 t-shirts. That's okay. That I just cycle. That's okay. Cycle through. That's good for the planet. But yeah, this is my cat family. Yeah, so there's cats yeah. all over the shirt. I picked this out at a thrift store, like Artie said, and it's his most worn shirt, for sure. Yeah, top two. Top two? What's the other one? My bike NYC shirt. Bike NYC? The green one. Oh, yeah, you wear that one all the time. I love that shirt. Okay. I'm not crazy about that shirt. I am wearing the Framework Bralette, and it is in uh, Malabrigo some color that I bought on our honeymoon in, do you remember where I bought this yarn? In Malabrigo, California. In San Francisco. Artie didn't even come into the yarn store. He was outside the whole time. Wow. But this was a special color dyed only for this shop. So you can see the back and it's a little bit longer than some of the other bralettes, but this I made. And then I also have on my buffet pants. These are, they're Velcro. So you can adjust how tight they are. And these are like my favorite travel pants. I really love those. These earrings I got at my local farmer's market in St. Louis. Um, there were two kind of young people selling earrings and I think 
these out. And then these glasses were gifted to me. Uh, they ha only have the blue light, um, but that's all I need. I don't actually um, have a prescription for glasses. Uh, so my friend Lamont's mother uh, is has an uh, optical lab in her home and she sent me these glasses. Aren't these right up my alley? They are. They've got the rainbows on the sides too. Hello. Do you like them, babe? Oh yeah. <laughs> and the hair in my eye. So that's what I'm wearing today. I knit this uh, during the pandemic. I started knitting this right after we moved to St. Louis. So I've had it for nearly a year now. And that's what I'm wearing. I am always threatening to make another one of these because I like it so much. I'm gonna try and make one in like linen or cotton. So it's a little more cool for the summer, but I don't actually think that the wool is too warm because it's it's barely close, let's be honest. Um, so there's a lot of ventilation that gets to happen. So it's a pretty good summer uh, make in my opinion. And I really do love Jesse May's patterns and this is, a pretty quick knit it took two skeins for i think the 36 inch size so i would recommend this really nice for summer so that's what i'm wearing what's next on my list oh my finished object so it's behind me okay got it so i finished my sheer v sweater hold on my mind Hold on. Oh, this is really nice. yeah. So I finished this and I'm so happy with it. It is uh, the size extra small and it did grow a little bit. You can see on the sleeves, I have the open cuff and I did work some increases along the sleeve. You can see where it grows a little bit. I worked some increases to increase about 10 stitches from the number I had at the cast on for the, the armhole. And it falls really nicely on me. I'll put a picture of me actually wearing it, but it's way too hot to try and put this on right now. Um, I'm probably gonna make like five or six more of these because they're so mm. cute. Did you see me wearing it? Yeah, I really like it. When did you see me wearing it? Mm. You were out of town. No, you, uh, well, when you were working on it, you put it on. It's not the same. Oh, okay. Because it looks different after it's blocked and the stitches like all relax. Hmm. So you haven't seen me wear it? No, I haven't. Okay, you haven't had the pleasure yet. Well, this yarn is Dying Red Star is the main color, the blue. And the contrast color, which is what the V is, is called Blushing Dahlia from Unlikely Fox Yarns. Fibers. Unlikely Fox Five. I, her name is Fox and she dyes yarn out of um, LA and it's great yarn. So I really do like that pattern. Um, I didn't make any modifications to the size extra small, only the arm increases and I don't remember what size needles I used, but I did do a gauge swatch block your swatch y'all that's something i just started doing recently because it's important so you know what size it's going to be after you actually wash it um do you know about blocking you do yeah put the block here like that right you're fired you gotta learn you you gotta blocking is when you we did we talk about this the last time yeah, I think so. Basically, when you put it in the water, that's why I have that pot that I yeah. use. I have a big stock pot. That's what I use to block my stuff that I make. And I put the the um, soap in there. Oh, yeah. And swirl it around. And let it sit there. So, yes. Yeah. That's the part you don't like. That's why you remember that. I have to let it soak. You can smell it. You can smell it. Yeah, doesn't have like a vinegar smell or something? No. Hmm. It's just water? It's water and a little bit of wool soap. Oh, okay. Hmm. It doesn't smell. But you can put vinegar. Like if you have a color that you feel like is maybe gonna bleed a little bit, mm -hmm. then if you put the vinegar, that helps to like set the acid. I feel you like you've put vinegar before. Maybe I have put vinegar yeah. before. It happens. 
Okay, so that is the only FO I have since the last time. Actually, that's not true. I do have another FO. It's the Radio Pop Sock, but I don't have it with me. It's in St. Louis, so I'll show you that on the next podcast. But I did bring a lot of works in progress with me because, you know, when you travel, you never know what mood's going to strike you and which project you're going to want to work on. Mm. So I'll just grab from the pile over here. So this is the Meadowlands sweater and this is a pattern by Tiff Nealon and it is a top down raglan let me hold it back mm -hmm. it's a top down raglan and it is um knit with a contrast color however in her sample she does not uh, it's knit holding a DK and a lace weight however the color in her sample is the same as the main color the contrast and the main are the same in her sample. So you can't really tell what kind of pattern it makes with the the instructions. The instructions are to like leave out the, the contrast color for some rows and then leave out the contrast color completely for the, the ribbing, I'm pretty sure. I didn't do that. I just went ahead and used my contrast color and my main color for the entire thing. That's what I'm gonna do. And I have enough yarn to do that with the main and the contrast color. This yarn is um, called Crystalline and it is from Amalia at Kindred Red. And it is full of little speckles, beautiful little dots all throughout there. And you can see how it fits. If you haven't seen me post this on Instagram, you can see on Instagram um, some photos of it in progress. And I do several different um, tutorials with this yarn on this sweater. So I'm nearing the bottom. I'm going to cast off uh, pretty soon. I am working the, the, not decreases, but the, what am I looking for? The chart, the lace chart for the ribbing at the bottom. So I'm going to finish that probably pretty soon. And then I'll be going on another trip to Sleeve Island. Mm -hmm. I just got off, but... <laughs> You know, it's like a constant flight, constant, um, you know, trips. So that's my Meadowland. And then next, this is, oh, this is still not skein. This is Jubilee. This was the color that I sold for Vibrant Color for June. And this is available directly from Baltopia Yarn Co. And she has, uh, her name is Tazra. She has um, maybe like three or four different bases she's selling this on and sock sets. So you can check out her Etsy page and I'll link that in the description. But I am making a koi tee with this. Oh, I need this crochet hook. I'm so glad I found this. Oh my gosh. I didn't know I had one of those with me. That's such good news. Okay. So this is the koi tee. And it is a top-down raglan with a detail, uh, like a ribbing detail down the raglan edges. So I don't have very much yet. You can kind of just see the beginning of it coming about, but I'll try and show you the, the details. Here is that ribbing um, detail that goes on the front and back, and then it has a split hem on the side. So I've been working on this for a little bit. Somehow, I can't find the pattern. I printed out the pattern and I can't find the pattern. And I'm hoping I'll find the pattern soon so that I don't have to print another one, but I'll probably just break down and print another one because it's not with me, it's in St. Louis. So that's Jubilee and the Koi Tea. I'm trying to finish that before the summer's out so that I'll still have a chance to wear that this summer. And um, with Jubilee, I also have the sock tube that I had cranked by um, Elba from Totally Tubular <coughs> Socks. And this is a sock tube. If you're not familiar with sock tubes, what do you think I'm gonna do with this? Yeah, you hold it. I think I remember you telling me, you gotta cut it and hem it? No. Close it. <laughs> That's the other option after I cut it, yes. <coughs> and you so, can choose whatever length you want. That's correct. So. I'm gonna make this into socks. So basically when you wear a sock, 
if you think of it, <coughs> your hem, the ribbing will be up here, and then you decide how long you want it for the toe. Then you cut there, blah, blah, blah. you cut there, and then you add the toe, then you cut in for the heel to do an afterthought heel. So mm -hmm. I can probably get probably two pairs of socks out of this. This is a very long tube. So um, I have the sample yarns, or not sample yarns, but I got these as samples from Tazara, and these are the contrast colors that come in the sock kit options that she's offering. So there's this really cute yellow, blue, and then this like fuchsia that's more the main color. So I'm probably gonna do some different heels and toes in here and make some socks, but I didn't bring the needle that I wanted to use. I like to do a size one needle for socks and I think I only have a size two with me. And I feel like it does really make a difference with like how good the sock like, you know, like sticks to your foot. I like a sock that's on my foot, you know, not a sock that's kind of like, you know, yeah. willy in and, you know, around. So I really try to only knit with a size one, but for some reason I can't ever find my needle gauge. So I just kind of feel, and the one that I have is not big enough. So I might have to pick up a needle along the way and then I can get these socks done. Um, the next thing is my spinning. So I had announced on Instagram that I did get a spinning wheel and this is the yarn that I'm spinning right now. It is a Malabrigo um, roving that is called Indiecita, which means like undecided. So it's actually kind of felted. Um, and this wasn't... Here, I'll show you some of the spools I have. So these are the, the singles that I've already spun. And I still have, well, that one's empty. I still have a little bit of roving left, maybe like a quarter of an ounce left. And then I'm waiting for my wheel to come so that I can ply them together on my wheel. But I will say the color on this yarn was very beautiful, you know, when it was roving in the package. Um, I'll say the color wasn't very penetrating and it made a lot of the brighter, more saturated colors that were on the outside into more like pastels because that layer underneath was still white and undyed. So if you're into that, that's good. If you're not, just, you know, like look inside a little bit before you buy it and see if it's dyed the way that you want for your project. Now, after spinning the Manos del Uruguay, which was my last spin, um, the Merino Tops, that was much more fluffy and easier to draft than this spin, which has been the like little parts that are kind of felted. And I feel like in my hand while I'm holding it to spin it, it felt really easily. Mm. You know what I mean by felting? You're coming apart? Like it gets little like... Little bumps? It gets, like, you know how like in your kitchen, like in the back of your hair, like where that little part is like always gets tangled? Okay. It's, it's kind of like that, but it happens like, and my hands sweat um, because I'm human. And when I have that clumped up in my hand and I'm spinning it and I'm spinning it, just what's left in my hand can start to like felt that. And mm -hmm. it didn't happen as much with other fibers, but I did notice that with the, the Malabrigo. So Malabrigo, if you're watching, I wanna work on that. Okay, so there's that. And then the last thing I have to show. So I wanna show this bag. And this is the bag from Tammy at Yarn and Whiskey that was for the Juneteenth collaboration. And <coughs> this bag is so pretty. T um, Terry. Tammy has so many bags on her website, yarnandwhiskey.com, that you can choose from. This has a drawstring. Do you want to take a look? It's nice. You always like Tammy's bag. Yeah. And it's got a lining. Very nice lining. All the stitching is very nice. Not like when I sew something. Um, so 
if you're looking for project bags, Yarner Whiskey. This is the Brain Freeze yarn that I am have on my website for sale right now at DarcyDoesIt.com. And this is the July collaboration with, oh, lost one. Oh. This is the July collaboration with um, Shawnee from Tazzy Crochets. And this is the Layla Bralette. Here, you hold it up, then. Okay. So, this color is inspired by Slurpee. So, like, you know, the best flavor, blue, obviously. And then a little purple in there. Did you ever get Slurpees growing up? Oh, yeah. You used to go to the gas station? I would get the Coca-Cola one. Coca-Cola one? Yeah. That was so boring. It tastes like Coke. Yeah, I love Coke. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, already didn't or get Or the one. orange soda one. Or I orange soda. Santa. Yeah, we should. It's like Slurpee weather right now. Yeah, oh, yeah. I need to finish this so I can put it on because this is, like, really perfect for this weather. So, I haven't finish the um top yet but you can see come closer already you can see here in the middle it has a um cable detail down the middle here and then it has some lace um eyelets on the side and it has crisscross straps that cross in the back and i just need to do the straps turn it around people can see the back i have to Attach the straps to the back, but it's looking really great so far. And this went really fast. So this base that I'm using is the DK base. I have DK. We also have fingering. This is sock. So it's a 7525 nylon. And I also have my favorite mohair. So this mohair is so beautiful i just i think color looks so much better on mohair than on just wool i don't know what it is about mohair do you want to touch it what do you think it's mohair mohair okay so these yarns are available right now on my website there are still some left in each base if you're interested in getting one of these and along with each one of these comes oh, oh, hold those up there Along with those, don't draw my comes a print from Elliot. And Elliot is a visual artist, and they have these beautiful prints on mulberry paper. I'm going to show you what it looks like. And holds just some cardboard on the back so that you can see what it looks like. And that's what it is. And Elliot has. I'm um, getting blown out. Elliot has signed um, here on the side. You can't really see it too well, but you can see the print is beautiful. They've each been um, painted by hand after Elliot has blocked them. And these are a special carving that Elliot made for me because I tend to make this L-shaped swatch whenever I swatch for a project. So basically with the L-shaped swatch, you can, you're doing great, Artie. Yeah. L. yeah. <laughs> With the L-shaped swatch, you can measure um, how many uh, rows and, oh wait, how many rows and how many um, columns you have without knitting all of this wasted space. So essentially, it saves you a lot of yarn and time because you don't have to make a whole square to just measure one row and one column over. So one of these comes with each order and all of the packages are um, sets of two skeins. So two DK, two fingering or to hair. And I think that's all that we have for today. What does it smell like? Like uh, lanolin. Is that how you Lanolin? Think? Yeah. Like the the juice the sheep make? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Sheep juice. Sheep juice. It's soft. It's soft. It's nice. Alright, so that's all we have for today. Um, I hope that you liked our podcast and if you did, please subscribe and share. If you didn't like it, just go ahead and keep scrolling. You don't have to give me a thumbs down. That's not nice. Um, I saw someone put three thumbs downs on my last video. I was like, I'm freaking talking about yarn people. Like, anyway. The haters gonna hate. Haters gonna hate and ain't is gonna ain't. Haters gonna hate. That's right. So, uh. 
If you're interested in purchasing any of this yarn or interested in uh, following or checking out the websites of any makers that I mentioned, you can check the description below. And I think we should go get a Slurpee. Yeah, totally done. Usually we do a snack. We don't have any snacks today. Um, we need to just get... Well, we talked up Slurpees. Yeah, we did talk up a Slurpee. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you can find me on Instagram at Darcy Does It and D-A-R-C-I not i e not y just d a r c i does it and thank you for coming back or for sticking through to the end of the podcast all right we're out of here okay and goodbye kiss yes bye y'all